everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial. Uh, it's been a while since I've recorded anything so uh, my apologies for that, for the lack of content. Um, but pushing forward I'm working on this guy uh, and right now I'm going to be tackling the cloak. So I want to go with kind of a bit of a weathered um, raggedy kind of look. So over the black undercoat, I'm working with Lupercal Green. So what I'm doing with this, and using quite a fine brush, um, this is a size zero in the, the new Broken Toad Mark III series. Um, it's just got quite a, a nice, nice tip on it. Loading up the brush, and you'll see that I've used this similar kind of technique to this in previous videos where I create rough kind of random marks and things uh, and to sort of create a, a bit of a texture. Uh, just to start out with I'm just kind of roughly plotting out where my main highlights are going to go. I'm going to kind of retain a lot of the black that's already there, because I want it to be quite dark, but the reason why I'm going with this colour is just kind of like a, a um, throwback to the origins of the Black Legion being the Sons of Horus, and going with that kind of sea green sort of look, I thought it'd be nice to represent that somewhere on the model. Um, yeah, so I'm going with Lupercal Green and sticking with that and then just mixing in Baneblade Brown, um, as you'll see as I progress. So, yeah, just, I've done some rough lines. It's not really too important, as long as I know where my highlights are going to go. Uh, and then from there, it's just kind of a matter of creating these, I kind of got just the tip of the brush on the surface and really just kind of jiggling it around for lack of a better term uh, and just like I said creating those rough marks. It's quite a, um, I feel like the, the I feel the Lupercal Green's quite a transparent colour. I've got it at sort of a layer consistency, uh, but a lot of that black is showing through, um, which is not such a bad thing, but you might be, might be a little bit hard for you to see on camera. So, as you can see, I'm kind of overlapping those highlight marks that I've put in. And I'm going quite, you know, going quite wide with this in terms of the, the band of highlight. And taking it right to the edge here as well. This corner. kind of, I don't know, I think I described this <laughs> technique as kind of like a stippling but a bit kind of more randomised rather than it being a, you know, a, a more uniform kind of dot, it's just letting the brush kind of flick about and yeah, just kind of doing its own thing. I find that creating a weathered texture, the best way to approach it is to try and be as random as possible. And so that's really what's at the heart of what I'm doing right now is it's very random. Uh, you know, lots of varying kind of 
strokes and marks. And layering it up, creating you know, a high opacity by you know, layering it up, layering up those marks. If you're wanting one area to be a bit lighter than others. Now, you know, I've, I've gone over this bit quite a bit because that's where a lot of light's going to be hitting. And same for this part here. So yeah, um, you know, as I said at the start, I would recommend using a fine brush for this. Um, unfortunately, doing something kind of as rough as this may shorten the life of the brush, but uh, using a brush that doesn't have a nice fine tip, it would just be a bit messier, I think, and you wouldn't get those nice fine marks. Um, so yeah, I feel it's kind of a an essential thing. Uh, so that's given us a nice base to work off of. Um, and I'm going to move on to the next step now. So the next step is approaching things in a similar way. And as I mentioned before, into the Lubrical green, I'm just going to be mixing Bane Blade Brown. So what I've got, the, f the first mix is a two parts Lupercal green to one part Bane Blade Brown. Just to bring up the lightness a little bit, we don't want to have too drastic a jump in the lightness uh, because uh, things would, it would just kind of stand out a bit too much. What we're looking for is layering this over the top as you would, you know, when you're layering any other paints. You the ideal approach is to have this next layer to be thinner so you've still got the previous color showing through as you can see that I'm doing now and and then the next layer as well even thinner so I mean as you can see that I'm doing now, I'm, I'm not kind of just staying within those bounds of uh, the previous color. I am dragging some scratches across, going into areas that I've not even gone into with the previous color. And that just helps to create that randomization that we're really lo we're looking for. And obviously, as I approach the previous color, in those areas that I'm wanting to be lighter, I'm going over a second time. So I mean, you know, as you can see, that you know, the reason why I've gone with this weathered kind of look is, I mean, the sculpt of the model itself, he's not wearing a, a nice new cloak. It's uh tattered and torn so uh, I thought the you know the best way to represent and accentuate that kind of look yeah it was to to try and bring that out even more with the painting I find it's nice to go quite light right on the edges as well because it gives it more of a weathered look like those bits have really been tattered and torn and the natural colour of the cloak has been just kind of worn out, almost bleached out in the heat of battle. So I'm going quite light on, on that bit there because I like the way that 
kind of stands out in that corner there. I'm just gonna go through and highlight all these edges at the bottom. Pretty happy with that where that's at. So I mean as you can see it's quite actually quite a quick process. mix is a one part Lupercal to two part uh, Bane Blade Brown um, and as previously mentioned I'm going over what I've already done so I'm bringing things in even tighter but again I can play around with bringing out some scratches and Going into areas that are untouched, and the benefit, you know, benefit of that is, you know, you're using a lighter color, so it's going to stand out more against the black. So it it works even better to do the scratches when you're working into the lighter colors. So this technique will work great for doing other cloaks as well, working with browns and things, just working through stages, even, you know, using maybe Rhinox hide instead of the Lupercal green and adding in your different parts of increasing, um, you know, Bane Blade Brown or even Karak Stone or something, which is a bit lighter, uh, and doing a, a brown cloak with it. All right, there we go. So, as you can see, starting to look even more weathered now, as it's kind of being more pronounced with the, the lighter shade. So yeah, I'm gonna move on to the next step. All right, so the next step is just to start really bringing out some of the details, refining things a little bit. And to do that, I'm gonna be using straight Bane Blade Brown. So just very minimally applying it to, you know, these tear holes here. Um, some of these edges that are standing out.
So in a sense, I'm kind of maybe you know using it to edge highlight and make those bits really stand out. Bring it right to the edges at the bottom here as well. Yeah, so there we go. So yeah, there you have it. A nice weathered, tattered and torn cloak uh, suitable for a Chaos Space Marine Lord. So uh, I hope that's been helpful and enjoyable and that's probably going to be the last video in the series for this guy. Um, he's basically finished apart from his base. Uh, and yeah, so I hope that's helped someone out. Thanks so much for watching this video and thank you so much again for your continued support. Thank you.